Hey guys, in this presentation I wanted to cover financial leverage as a concept and kind of the macro picture of what it is. And then in the second tutorial I wanted to relate financial leverage to managerial accounting and see how we can leverage a business. But before we get into any examples, I wanted to talk about three things that I want you to remember. The first is that normally when we leverage a company, we're going to be taking on debt or we're going to be borrowing funds. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that with leverage, there's an increased amount of risk, but also an increased amount of reward. So if we leverage our business, we're gonna have more risk, more risk, more reward. If we deleverage our company, we're gonna have less risk, but also less reward. So it works both ways. And of course, we can expand on this and say that leverage magnifies our profit if our company is doing well, but it also can magnify our losses if our company is doing poorly. So I want you to remember these three things as I go throughout the tutorial. So to start off, uh, normally you might hear the term leverage. You might think about a stock Someone might be saying, oh, I'm going to leverage that stock two to one, or I'm going to leverage it three to one. I'm going to leverage uh, the shares of Apple two to one. And these two ratios are very similar to the ratios we'll see in gambling. So if you've ever played roulette or seen a roulette board, uh, at the very bottom, we can see one of these ratios, the two to one at the bottom. So. For instance, if we were to put $1 on that spot, on that 2 to 1 spot, if any of these numbers in this column comes up, we're going to get $2 of profit for every $1 we put on this spot. So let's say a 10 comes up, that means we're going to get $2 of profit for the $1 we put on the spot because of course the 10 is within the first column. If we wanted something that was perhaps a bit more rewarding, we would put we would make a single bet and the, the payout would be 35 to 1 so if it lands on the 9 we're going to get $35 for the $1 we put on the board and what I'm trying to get at here is the more risk we take on the more reward you see I mentioned that earlier so that has to do with actually leverage the greater the leverage the greater the risk to reward and I can also demonstrate leverage by looking at a lever. The word was de derived from the word lever. So a basic lever, uh, one that you might have encountered maybe in elementary school, you have the beam at the top and then below it is the fulcrum and together they make up the almighty lever. And it's kind of like a seesaw. Well, it is a seesaw in that if you have two people on both sides with equal weight, the lever will, of course, will balance. But if we move this fulcrum or the triangular shaped thing underneath the beam, maybe to the right and increase our leverage, then we're going to have an M balance. I should actually get rid of which layer is it? this layer. OK, so we're going to have an imbalance in this scenario. So how do we how do we actually balance this? Well, we're going to instead of having one person on the right side, we're going to have two people on the right side. So by moving the fulcrum, we've increased our leverage and now it's a 2 to 1 ratio of people on uh, opposing sides. So with the one input on the left, the, the left side, the one person, we've amplified our output to two output and we can take this a bit further and say what if we move the fulcrum even further to the, the right well there's going to be an imbalance again so two people is not going to be sufficient so we're going to actually need probably this is just an estimation but maybe eight people so now it's an eight to one ratio by leveraging or increasing our leverage. So with the one input, we've amplified our output now to eight output. So you can see as we increase 
the leverage, we're also increasing our output, or technically you can think of this as our reward, but this can also be our loss. And we'll talk about that right now as we look at a investment example. So I've got this investment question right here, and it says that we have $1,000, and we're going to get a 10% return on the market, 5% borrowing rate if we decide to borrow, and it's going to be payable at the end of the year, the interest, along with the principal that we, the 1000 or however much money we borrow. So let's say we don't borrow anything. Let's say we just... We use no leverage and we just use the $1,000. Well, we're going to get $100 as the, the, the profit, and that's going to be the 10% return. So that's a decent return, but what if we want to actually leverage our investment? Well, we can, we can borrow because leveraging is borrowing or taking on debt. So let's say we borrow two to one and we now have $2,000 and we're going to have to owe them interest at the end of the year. Well, with the 10% return, we're going to get $200 of profit. But of course, we also have to pay back the interest. So 5% on $1,000, just $1,000 because we already started with $1,000, so we don't have to pay any interest on the money we had. We only have to pay it on the, the amount we borrowed. So 5% times $1,000 is going to be $50. So our profit will actually be, after interest, it'll be $150. And if we look at the difference between $150 and $100, that's actually going to be a 50% gain uh, or increase by leveraging our investment. And you can just get that by doing 150, subtract 100, divide it by 100, and that will show the difference or the increase by using leverage. So the next part is we can see the opposite happens if we were to actually have a loss. So instead of this, instead of this 10 return, we're going to have a 10% loss. So if we start off with $1,000, we're going to be having a $1,000, or not a $1,000 loss, but a $100 loss, and we're going to be left with $900. That part's very clear. If we have $2,000, because we borrowed 2 to 1, we're going to have a $200 loss. But the thing is, we're also going to have to pay back 5% on the 1000 we borrowed, which is going to be 50 And because of that, it's going to be $250 of a loss, or we're going to be left with actually 750 since we have to pay back $1,000, and then we have a 250 loss on top of that. So it's just 2000 minus 1000 minus 250 and that's how you get the 750. So our losses are magnified by leveraging our investment. So it can work both ways. It can magnify the, the profit and also the loss by using leverage. And I want to talk about this more, but this tutorial is getting kind of long and I'll relate it back to managerial accounting and talk about the degree of operating leverage in the next one. So this is probably a little bit more of a complicated tutorial. Ask any questions that you have, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next presentation. If you have any questions regarding accounting or any of the material within our videos, you can tweet us at NotePirate, you can like us on Facebook to receive updates or to share any quick anecdotes about how our videos might have helped. And like always, Thanks for watching us on YouTube.